Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different, because we're going to have a look at the House of Commons voting record of our certain Conservative MP, Jake Berry, who is uh, the Conservative MP for Rosendale and Darwin. And we all know what uh, why this man's been in the news recently, because when he was asked about... Um, how people are going to manage with their energy bills and all that. And he just basically get a better job or use less. And to me, that's a little bit like saying to a man who's dying of starvation to not eat too much. And so we shall have a little look at our Jake Berry's voting record. And oh, I'm on there. They work for you website. And uh, this is his voting record on Welfare and benefits, where almost always voted against spending public money to create guaranteed jobs for young people who have spent a long time unemployed. And and this is very interesting. Seven votes where he's voted against spending public money to create to create jobs. And let's have a little look down where on the 12th of June 2014, Jake Berry was absent for a vote on the Queen's speech on the economy of living standards. But on the 27th of November 2013, Jake Berry voted against an energy price freeze against long-term reform, reforms to the energy market. Yes, done that spring to mind with a certain uh, interview. Against more free child care for wor working parents of three and four year olds, against action to boost the housing supply, and against a compulsory jobs guarantee for young people and the long term unemployed. This man's a charmer, isn't he? And on the 4th of September 2013, Jake Berry voted against calling on the government to get more people into work, bring forward capital investments introduce a compulsory jobs guarantee, reintroduce a 10% rate of income tax paid for by a mansion tax act on rip-off rail fares and soaring energy costs, stand up for families in a private rented sector, reform pensions, curb payday lenders and reform banking, planning and for skill six system. Yes, voted against all that. Hmm. And on the 15th of May 2013, Jake Berry was absent for a vote on Queen's speech, economic growth. Mm. And on, he was rather busy on the 17th of May 2012. Jake Berry voted against measures to stimulate economic growth and job creation, against attacks on bank bonuses to fund guaranteed jobs for young people out of work for over a year against reducing VAT, against a tax break for small firms taking on extra workers, and against making infrastructure investment sooner. Charmer, yes. <laughs> you aren't saying they are for this guy. Jake Berry voted against creating jobs, a tax on bank bonuses to fund guaranteed jobs for young people out of work for a year, a VAT cut, a tax break for small firms taking on more workers and making infrastructure investment sooner. And on the 14th of December 2011, Jake Berry voted against creating 100,000 jobs and building 25,000 homes using funds raised via a bank bonus tax, against reducing VAT on home improvements and against tax breaks for small firms taking on new workers. And on the 9th of November 2011, Jake Berry voted against introducing a tax on bank bonuses. Shocker. To guarantee a job for 100,000 young people and build 25,000 affordable homes against making investments sooner, against reducing VAT and against tax break for small firms taking on extra workers. And on the... 12th of October 2011, wish you were in the 1911s, wouldn't have this cretin, would we? Jake Berry voted against creating more jobs for young people, funded by bank bonuses, making planned investments sooner, reducing VAT 
and a tax break for small firms taking on extra workers. Yes. All you people wanting aspirations, this guy isn't going to work for you, is he? But anyway, generally voted against raising welfare benefits, at least in line with prices. Yes, exactly. And this is the best one for me. And we'll go into this a little bit more detail because this is my little bugbear. Generally voted against paying higher benefits over longer periods for those unable to work due to illness and disability. Why do I say that? Because as somebody who had emergency spinal operation after 30 years of work and uh, my mobility is shot to pieces, in, an, in this uncaring world, I'm on an intensive job search as somebody who can barely move and uh, I get no sympathy what's whatsoever from the DWP because apparently I'm fit for work because for the simple reason I can sit down and read a book for an hour or and I can listen to a DAB radio yes I shit you not that's the marking of how they use it to, oh and this is over a telephone how they do decide how you are fit for work you would not believe it if I told you honestly but we'll have a little look on this because he had had one vote for and 11 votes against and eight absentees and this was all between 2012 and 2022 now let's have a little delve into this bit but like I say on the 7th of February 2022 Jack Berry voted yes on social security and pensions so that'll be the one for them won't it on the 24th of Jan 2022 Jake Berry was absent for a vote on cost of living increases, income, poverty, universal credit, energy payment and child payments. Mm. On He was also absent on the 21st of September, September 2021, where he was absent for a vote on working people's finances, government policy. And he was also absent on the 15th of September 2021, where... He was absent for a vote on universal credit and working tax credit. Maybe on a family holiday, who knows. But Jake Berry, who was also absent on the 18th of January 2021. Jesus Christ, what a holiday this must have been. When he was absent for a vote on universal credit and working tax credit. Hmm. And, but, oh, on the 20, 20th of July 2016, he voted for cuts in housing benefit for recipients in supporting supported housing on the 8th of june 2016 jake berry voted for reductions in benefits for disabled and ill claimants required to participate in activities intended to increase their chances of obtaining work and on the 2nd of march 2016 jake berry voted against making the removal of the work-related activity component from unemployment and support allowance conditional on an impact assessment and against requiring Parliament to approve details of implementing the change. And and I I don't know why, but I get the feeling they've uh, basically... Oh, yeah, there's... Yeah, yeah, there's a slight difference, yes. On the same day, he voted against making the removal of the limited capability for work element of universal credit conditional on an, on an impact assessment and against requiring Parliament to approve details of implementing the change. And on the 27th of October 2015, Jake Berry voted to remove the work-related activity com- component from the employment and support allowance. He also on the on the same day also voted to remove the limited capability for work element element of universal credit and on the 27th of october 2015 jake berry voted to reduce the household benefit cap to freeze the rate of many working age benefits to reduce social rents in england and for other changes to the benefit system and on the same day no on on the 20th of july 2015 i do apologize 
My pins are failing me. Jake Berry voted to reduce the household benefit cap to freeze the rate of many working age benefits to reduce social rents in England and for other changes to the benefit system. And on the, fa- f- on the 1st of February 2012, he was absent for a vote on Welfare Reform Bill Clause 51, the Employment and Support Allowance of Those Ill or Disabled Since Their Youth. And on the same day, well, it was well, he was missing all day when it came to all the others, like absent for the Clause 51 period of entitlement to contributory employment and so support allowance, uh, and employment on on support allowance for those with cancer, and Clause 10 universal credit payments in relation to disabled children and young people. On the 15th of July 2011, Jake Berry voted to introduce universal credit and personal independence payments and to restrict housing benefit for those in social housing deemed to have excess bedrooms. He also, on the 9th of March 2011, Jake Berry voted to introduce universal credit and personal independent payments and to restrict housing benefit for those in social housing deemed to be have excess bedrooms now i don't know why they voted them on different days and and he also did the same thing on uh, the 9th of march 2012 so yes like i said you 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 people in the rosendale and darwin uh, area i hope you're paying attention but anyway, we will run through these last couple where almost always voted for reducing housing benefit for social tenants deemed to have excess bedrooms, like I've said over, which Labour described as the bedroom tax. And almost always voted for making local councils responsible for helping those in financial need afford their council tax and reduce the amount spent on such support. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Generally voted for a reduction in spending on welfare benefits. Now, I'd love to go into that, but uh, there is 46 votes for, three votes against and 15 absentees. And I think this video has gone along enough and uh, I don't think it'll tell you anything different to what, uh, what type of man our Jake Berry is. Yes, Jake Berry is... Just one of them absolutely arduous little turds, isn't he? And uh, no, knowing him, if he would watch this, he would view me as uh, one of the anti-growth coalition. Yes, this is the anti-growth coalition West Yorkshire branch. Yes, I'm your CEO of West Yorkshire branch of uh, anti-growth coalition. <laughs> but anyway, I shall leave this video here and I shall also, before I go, I'll leave, I'll pop this uh, link in the description box for you to all look and admire the, this great absolute Burke and uh, see what kind of absolute charlatan this man is. So anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. Wish you all a fantastic weekend and take care. <laughs>